Tristan? Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. So, um, thanks for coming out the other night. I yeah. think I think we all had fun, eh? Yeah, it was really funny. It was a good feed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. Um, so, at that time, of course, I gave you an idea of what uh, this is all about. Yeah. Um, so, you want to dive right in and yeah. tell me about a belief that you have that you'd like to sort of explore the methodology for how you get there? So, I think uh, something that I've been thinking a lot recently is the difference between the people we are and the people we think we are, or the okay. people we want to be. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it's a lot harder to keep those two in sync than... I've learned it's harder to keep those two in sync than, I want, than I'd want to think, and you can very easily become a person you don't... you didn't think you could be. Oh, okay. Just over time. That's interesting. Yeah. So, um, explain that a little bit more. Uh, Give me an example of, of how that manifests. So, the reason I'm thinking about all this is I was just, just got out of a three-year relationship. Um, and I'm trying to work on myself because... I know I can be better than I was, and I think I fell into a lot of patterns in the relationship that come f came from what I saw my parents doing. Okay. Or not what I saw my parents doing, but what it, what they did, and I thought I knew how not to do that, or I thought I knew how to love properly, and. Partially, I think, holding that belief is what caused the relationship to end. Okay, so be more specific on the belief that you were holding that you believe caused your relationship to end. I mean, I think when you believe that you're all, I think when you believe that you're great at something, you stop putting work into it. No, oh, okay. I think that kind of makes sense. Okay. When you take for granted that, I mean, love is a word, but love is also a collection of actions and choices. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, so I, I think that I just fell into the trap of thinking this person loves me and whatever I do will be okay. Okay. And then the person figured out that they ended up in a situation they did not sign up for. Okay. And left. I see. And sh she realized we were in this situation before I did. But then once she left and it all came rushing in just how far I had drifted from being a happy person. Okay. Just how much I had let myself kind of start getting my mom's a huge fan of Brene Brown of Brene Brown okay so Daring Greatly is one of her books and all this and okay I'm not familiar yeah sorry. she's she's <clears throat> become a popular self-help person I see in the last decade okay um and I've read these her books have really helped my mother and because you know we are in the same family, probably similar issues. Mm. I decided to give it a try. And I tried re reading one of these books when I thought everything was going great and it wasn't, and nothing resonate, resonated with me. Okay. But now, with the knowledge that I have now, being through this experience, seeing how, yeah, being through this experience, reading this book and seeing how I was putting on a I was I was lying to myself and withdrawing from this relationship because of the book uses the term shame. Like okay. Meaning I mean it can be shame for anything. Really like not being able to control drug use or uh not wanting affection when the other person doesn't and somehow that 
causing me shame, not wanting to be wanted, I don't know. But the the belief, um, I suppose, and maybe, and please correct me if I'm not getting this right, I, I, because I, I sort of want to get a really good sense of, of what it is you're saying in my own mind. So the person you were during this relationship, uh, you later learned, was not the authentic person that you are? I think... I, in my childhood, there was, uh, my dad, uh, became sick, okay. went to the hospital for years and then came back out. I think I learned how to live in crisis mode. Okay. Which is do all the things that you know you should and just wait for this part to be over. And we had a, me and my partner moved in with one of her friends in a roommate situation. We all became very close and that relationship ended, partially because of decisions I made. Okay. Um, and basically from that point forward, I think I was kind of just in crisis mode a bit, okay. just trying to survive. So in terms of this sort of relationship and it having ended, um, what I hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're accepting the 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 larger uh, burden of it not having gone well or of mm -hmm. it having broken up. Is there is there a reason is there a reason for that? I mean. I mean, we're um, all sort of flawed beings to some degree. We, we absolutely are, but... Yeah. And, and I... <laughs> I yelled at my mom for telling me I was a good person the other day, but... The... Yes, this other person was not perfect. Right. And there were things that they did, but... I... Started... Um... I, I lost my sense of generosity in our relationship. Oh, okay. That if this other thing, if they didn't do something good for me or I got frustrated with them about something, then I wasn't going to do my nice thing. I and see. And that's a, that's a vase to the bottom. Right, sort of passive-aggressive yeah. stuff, right? And to feel then like your relationship isn't as close as it used to be and to try to fix that by distancing yourself. Mm. These decisions I didn't even know I was making. Okay. Um, and and yeah. this, is, this is because of this crisis mode you found yourself sort of that operating That feels like an of... easy way out, but I think partially. Okay. I think partially I, I didn't... Um, I remember my childhood as being pretty normal, and it wasn't. And I okay. think that might be a red flag that I'm, <laughs> I don't deal with the harder part. Okay. So, like, I've, I've been to counseling, ten sessions counseling, different count, like, and, and I'm realizing now that I've never truly opened up in a session. Okay. I've went in with a problem that I've identified and I had reasoned all into a nice little clean ball. Mm. And then... Nothing, nothing really happened. So, so you 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 sort of introduced yourself uh, or your belief as the people we are are not. Maybe you can articulate that again for me. Right. So the difference between the ideals we hold and the actions we do take. Okay. Uh, I mean, an extreme example would be somebody who loves their wife and would never hurt them, but still hits them. Okay. And I don't know. I don't know. That's more just an area I'm trying to figure out. Um, and I think there's. It's this hard. This hard part where just because there's a person and they're wearing one set of pants, they're a single person. Mm. And to be someone who 
uh, struggles to control like substance use like when it comes to marijuana it's I know very well the feeling of wanting to opposite things at once okay of wanting and uh, like yeah so I don't know like I guess that's how do you how do you bring closer the person you want to be and the person you are okay and I guess deliberate action okay would be my guess so so I mean do you then believe that you do have the capacity to change or to to move into the ideal person I, that you you really want to be <laughs> uh I think so, but I think it's going to take more work than, I think it's going to be, I think, I think it would, it, yes, but I think it would cause an identity crisis as well. Okay. In the sense that, but there are parts about my current identity that I don't particularly like or that I think are maladaptive. And okay. one of them is the clothes I wear. There was a period where I would dress really nice and do all that and then uh, I stopped buying new clothes and lost 40 pounds and everything so I had no clothes that fit me and oh, yeah. that was also a sticking point in the relationship and I just never I never considered even, yeah, simple stuff like, you know, making sure my beard's trimmed if we're going out to dinner or... Right, I, right. I, I also feel like at this point I never, in, in my life, like, <clears throat> learned how to properly love myself. And I, okay. And I only relied on my partner's love for me. Right, right. And without love for myself, I wasn't going to invest time in making sure I look good, making sure my stuff's nice. Okay, uh, so so your self-esteem was dependent on her evaluation or your partner's evaluation of, of you? Sorry, um, I'm just, that would I'm have just been the smart way of doing it. Okay. Uh, my way was to just... <clears throat> I, I would do that and then also reason, and then also argue and reason and rationalize my way out of actually doing it or just say like yes I definitely need new clothes I know and then just not buy them mm. false promises became quite a thing because I I didn't we stopped, stopped having the conversations about or Planning to go on like a expensive trip or to a music festival is a lot of fun for people. Mm -hmm. When the conversation starts for me, it makes me think that we don't have enough money. Okay. And that kills the fun for me. Oh, I see. So. So you introduce stress points that yeah. essentially take the joy and fun out of. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that you do? T like often is or is that the behavior you started to exhibit after a while that part was always there and and i think it all exacerbates it's there's no one linchpin there's no one thing that sure. was but i i think yeah that was something that was always there that i never truly realized that it's not the way to solve that isn't to get more money Right, right, gotcha. <laughs> right? And so does that, again, sort of correlate to your, uh, this crisis uh, thing that you were talking about with your father? Uh, uh, see, I put mine on do not disturb. Yeah, I know, it was so silly of me not to. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. I mean, my dad was a very... Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with it. I, I think I've only realized um, in these last few days just how much I'm like my dad. Like, I have three older brothers, and I didn't see them for a period of time, and then I saw all of them, and I'm like, oh my god, you're all exactly like dad. Mm -hmm. And here I am thinking I'm just me. 
Right. Right? Like, I'm... Unaffected. Yeah, exactly. I'm just as much like them as anyone. Interesting. And that's... And again, I guess that's also the other... The other thing that I've been thinking about recently is the windows through which we view others. Okay. Um, but I... This is, I think one of the things that happened was in my parents' relationship, you know, they had four kids and they were loyal to each other. They raised us very well. My dad passed away five years ago. Um, but he was in, he lived in denial basically constantly of his health and, okay. and his relationship and, and was constantly doing something to distract himself. Okay. Whether it was eating, which led to his poor health, or alcohol, or he's, yeah, he stopped drinking after he went in the hospital the first time. But, um, yeah, eating alcohol, buying things, online poker. Indulgences. Indulgences. And he, but he was a successful man in the sense that the business he ran brought in a lot of money. Okay. But where is it now? Right, right. So, hmm. he, yeah, there was, and again, and one of the things talking about this, like, reading Brene Brown, who, you know, is a shame researcher, she talks about how the people who are the most deeply affected by shame are those that don't use the word, that don't talk about it, that, you know, it's... One, it's a problem, it's invisible. Mm. And my dad dealt heavily with shame. Like, that was what he was raised in, was shame. Right. And he... he his biggest... One of his biggest things was pouting. Which is to say, uh, if he didn't get what he wanted or something, he would just get sad and he wouldn't talk. And... I'm now realizing that that's driven by shame because I do the same behavior. Oh, okay. And in my head, I, I never know why I'm pouting or even sometimes if I am, but I'm now looking back realizing that the sadness that I'm feeling at that moment can be contextualized as shame. Okay. Shame for not doing the right thing, for not saying the right thing or you know right yes uh, I, i'm just wondering because uh in the, you know in the past i've certainly sort of uh attached uh attached my thinking to you know something i've read that was particularly profound for me or mm -hmm. uh you know seemed to open my eyes to a new yep. sort of aspect of things could could this shame thing yeah, that model. you see right now yeah. just be sort of a uh you know, sort of a a way station where you're you're sort of passing through to a better understanding. Absolutely, I think okay. that's so. That's one of the things is I uh, that the thought I had is like this is the book I needed to read before I went into author. Okay. Okay. These are this is gives me the vocabulary to start looking in some of these things, and I might find different. different so it, it might change down the road. Step, right. 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 Absolutely. Okay. And and I guess that's my so to get into i guess the epistemological part a bit more um i kind of am in, in the camp that there that we are in this two world system okay there's the physical world where you know there's a thing here there's a monkey in that chair and there's a monkey in this chair mm -hmm. and then there's also tristan and higgs okay is it higgs sure you... what well, yeah whatever okay. I, I yeah so and, you know, so I think that basically any time we're talking, what we're doing, anything we talk about exists in this, in kind of the world of ideas. Okay, so a conceptual yeah, world. That exists a physical between world. people. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. And I think that's generally my split, so I guess there's this... There's and and I would say with that is that there's more than one way to model the physical. Okay. And 
that's kind of how I fall when it comes to discussions of God and love okay. and things like this. Is like it's for a lot of these for a lot of these conversations. Um, I feel like it's it's yeah it's different ways humans have decided to interpret and to um, what's the word uh, turn into stories. Okay. Our feeling of the divine of of that part of that part of the world that isn't everything else. So because this is the other kind of you know, high thought you could say that I have is that I I think as consciousness as conscious beings the one main limit we have mm. is the second that we're thinking of something, we're thinking of its opposite. You can't have a thing without having everything else. You can't okay. have the good without the bad because once you're defining the good, you have to have the it bad. It is the context. And I feel like a lot of this some philosophies are trying to language through to enter into the world of ideas the concept that there is that that's the base limit of how a human usually thinks again the the idea of the yin and the yang and everything like that it's that is the only way to try to language that concept of everything being connected is to say that there's this and that and it's both okay so um i don't know always a bit of a tent yeah no no that's no, no, very interesting i mean i love these kinds of con conversations um now you know having said without the without the bad there isn't the good the, you know there's mm -hmm. the sort of the opposite poles um how Oh, sorry. So how that was relating back is to yeah. say, so by the time we're defining reality mm -hmm. and everything that we touch and feel, there's going to be the other part. And I am now of the opinion, I used to be a hardcore atheist, I'm now of the opinion that that is the divine, that is the spiritual. It is the non-physical. And it is in the realm of the conceptual world and is not real in the physical world, but is real in the conceptual world, which is the world of people. So, how how do how do concepts come to be? A consciousness thinks of one. Oh, okay. So they're uh, they're, concept, they're a manifestation yeah. of human consciousness. Yeah, I would say a concept, and again, and I, I would say this too is that like, as consciousness too, we are pattern matching machines. Sure. And we feel very revelatory to go like, here is a picture of a of a galaxy that looks like neurons. Sure. And it is all those structures, no matter their size, are ruled by the same laws of just what the universe is. Yeah. And there's the sense to say that you're connected to the universe because you are a part of the universe. Sure. You're a part of, you know, we're two parts of the universe talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um, so so I yeah. guess what, I, what I'm hoping to understand about your mm -hmm. feeling about this is what, what does that mean to say there's a spiritual aspect? Yeah, I mean, if it's fair to say that the world of... Mm -hmm. concepts or ideas yeah. is something that arises from consciousness yeah what does it mean to say that there's a spiritual component to the I th universe i would say spirituality the definition that i'm starting to like is about connection okay and again if i would say that if, if we're talking about you know the conceptual world as much as sure you could say mind in a jar you know, is a the conceptual world as we know it is, exists between people and mm -hmm. as a result of people. Okay. Like, look around us. What's at, at literally everything within, however far of us was built by people mm -hmm. that we've never met that died before we were born. Mm -hmm. And 
don't know where I was going with that now. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> what I'm trying again yeah. to get a sense of is, uh, so using terms like, like spiritual sometimes right. naturally draws people to yeah, a connotation sure. of divinity, sure. yes, of God, yes, and all yes. the rest of it. So what, I was, yeah, so what I was getting at is that is the, the feeling, to use it in the, in the sense of meaning connection to humans and to nature and to the world around you. Okay. I would, I would kind of try to use it in that sense, like going to a punk concert can be spiritual. Right. You walk into a room, you get in a mosh pit with people you never meet, you've never met before, right. and will never meet again. Right. And you connect with them. Right. You get now, to but with but them. does this all happen on in the physical world? Um, if there was no physical universe, could the universe could a universe of concepts exist? As in in terms of it's almost what not we are worth thinking about. <laughs> What's that? It's almost not worth thinking about. If you're a mind thinking, you're in a universe where a mind is thinking right um again and, and all these are really like mind is it is a is something that might start getting strange in the next 20 years as far as a concept as we may be able to get more you know to be able to manipulate it more directly with technology and okay. augment it all but so our understanding of mind and consciousness might increase yeah and in ways that we can't foresee but i mean um yeah i mean i guess no nope, i'm lost again <laughs> <laughs> that's all right uh what i'm trying to get a sense of is uh again in using terms like spirituality yeah. uh like I know a lot of a lot of people who speak about spirituality, yeah. but think of it as you know sort of a supernatural so, force so or I'll supernatural you, aspect of the universe. I'll tell you this: the sure. one the one thing that I the turn that I really made when it came to to this is because I used to I totally used to like fly away from spirituality as a term as you know those okay. terms and all that. Um, but the one that I really started to use as I as I was around some people that really made me feel uncomfortable just being around them is energy. Okay. You can feel a person's energy when they're in the room. And I and I use that <laughs> I use it in, in somewhat of a tautological sense, I think, where a person's energy is what you feel when they come into the room. Okay, I'm you know not what sure I mean? what you mean by tautology, though. Is when you you define a so a tautology is. Oh, I, I know what a yeah. tautology is. But I'm I but I guess I, I, I guess I'm I'm saying is that whatever whatever that is, whatever that hard to define part is, is their energy. Okay. It is defined by its hard to define elements and these things that you know. Again, it might be their posture. It might be. You know, if a person Subtle walks into a room and, and says, like, facial what up, everyone? Like, that's different than sure. if they walk in head down. Right. They have... People... People... Um, let's put it this way. People express their inner worlds, their, their own conceptual worlds, through their body language and sure. how they present themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think to be spiritual or to be a connected person is to be able to read that or identify that to some okay. extent right and also to express your own yeah vibe or energy w would yeah. vibe be a, another Vibe's good term another good one yeah okay yeah, so vibe. so w what i was really trying hoping to, to be clear about was that we're not talking about a supernatural force or a supernatural mm -hmm. energy energy is a label just like vibe would be yeah. which just like connotates vibe. you know the sort of collection of yeah nuances and mannerisms and speech inflections and all that kind of exactly. stuff that give other people a sense of what Who kind of are, person yeah. we are okay good yeah. Interesting. And, and again okay. I would say it's a label just like we use red green these things are you know those are the ones that you that just are so natural to a human that you don't consider that that's <laughs> the color of something is we use we use the same word to describe an individual experience, right? Because a colorblind person has a different experience. Like, you know, to them, something isn't red. It's a 
grayish green red right so i but wouldn't a colorblind person in that instance know that there's a deficiency there certainly uh like when you're taking your driving test and they've got mm -hmm. the dots in green mm -hmm. and then the dots in red and if you're colorblind you can't see the number 59 there would you say there are certain people that are or would you agree that there are certain people that are deficient in picking up on another person's energy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that just yeah. can't read a... They just can't read it. Yeah, yeah they're like through, vibe, vibe blind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, through, yeah, yeah. through whatever means you get there, like I think, yeah, it is definitely yeah. a thing you can be... Do, do you think that's something that a person may be deficient in but can learn to appreciate? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> <Right> <laughs> Um, and that, is that something you, you're you trying to work on? Yeah. Which again relates, I guess, back to your original, uh, the original conversation about your relationship and uh, seeing your own shortcomings in how you... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that is because I think there's um, the sense I had of, of sarcastic detachment of, of things I wasn't the best at or... Um, or things I didn't think were important. Okay. Um, and I don't think, I don't think you can read other people genuinely unless you're genuine yourself to some extent. Sure. I mean. And and what does that look like? Like, what does it look like to be genuine? Yeah. So that's the other problem I have because genuinely, I don't care how I look. Okay. I yeah, I'll walk out of the house wearing anything. But I also know that that won't get me the life that I want to. I want to be successful in business. Right. You know, and it's software, so it's a lower bar. But I, you know, genuinely I want to do... That's the problem is, is I guess I'm... Now, to figure out my genuine self, I need to... I guess kind of knock the skeletons out of my closet okay. and find find the things that I do because they're genuine, genuinely me or the things that I do because I'm scared of someone's thinking I dress poorly right. or someone thinking I tried and failed. That's my fear. Okay. Is trying and failing. Okay. I'm totally fine failing if I didn't try. Right. But if the second I try and fail is when my, yeah, my shame response comes up high. Because I never had many, I didn't play sports, didn't do music recitals, didn't do. Mm -hmm. And then and then there were just so many more See concerns, so many more pressing concerns than what Tristan was up to when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of safe spaces to practice failure. I got a lot of practice in succeeding. But I wasn't, if I didn't want to do something, my parents didn't push me. And literally the first fight I got in with my dad is when, is, uh, when I turned like 16 and was going to drop out of school. Because I was homeschooled and you don't do real school and homeschool at that okay, point. Yeah. You don't have to. And he hated the school system, thought it was pointless, thought it was a waste of time. But then in that moment was like, well, no, you don't, you like... Because I had no other plans. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to drop out of school and then go... To Tour Europe yeah, or something, like, right, right. I was right. just not going to do it anymore. Right. And that was the first time he expressed the feeling of, it's like, I don't want to force you to do something, but I also don't want you to, 10 years from now, go like... I'm in a bad spot. I really wish my dad had just pushed me that bit more. Mm. And that's the amount of autonomy that I grew up with. Interesting. And that made me into who I am. All my positive elements, but also all my negative elements. Okay. I think. Okay. I, I was interested by, you know, because you were talking about becoming your genuine self. And... When, when when I hear that, I I sort of get, uh, and it just comes into my head that 
there's a uh, your chunk of marble, and inside that chunk of marble is a finished sculpture which you are just chipping mm -hmm. away at. Is that is that the way you kind of see yourself when when you speak of becoming your genuine self, or are you, you know, malleable and changing, and that there is no defined end you. It's just whatever you end up being. So, with the qualities you choose. What I've said. So, there's a chance my relationship isn't over. The okay. way I've been framing it as, this relationship of three years is done. We're not right. going back into that. That was right. terrible. Gotcha. Um, what was your question? Well, whether whether this idea of being your sort of genuine is self like is a sculpture down. or is it a a, a, a ball of putty that you are just molding in accordance to these things you discover about the yourself. The term I've found um, to some extent is finding your core. Okay. Is just the things that what are the fundamental things that are you. Okay. And um, I think that's, that's part of it. Like uh, yeah to, and and I feel like the other things, like I again, like I've basically been having a breakdown since I moved to Kelowna at the end of August, um, and doing things that connect you to your core. So I didn't. I would get up. I worked from home, so I didn't even go out and see coworkers. Right, right. I would get up. I'd work, maybe smoke a bit of weed, make the bed. Ash, um, partner would get home, we'd, you know, have dinner, watch some TV, go to bed. It was Monday to Friday. Oh, okay. And I never made time. I, I stopped. I think at a certain point I was disconnecting from myself more because, yeah. Okay. So, like, I stopped listening to music that I like. I would put on random or new music because it doesn't, I think... Your own music library at times can connect you to who you are. Sure. To the person you are. And, yeah. I, and I think music can be spiritual in that way. Um, and again, like there, you know, there are these things that nobody wants to admit that they need, but they definitely do, like exercise. I wasn't doing any exercise when I was there. I wasn't, I stopped using body wash. I was just like, you know, I'd shower, I'd get clean, I'd scrub, but I'd not, you know, I wasn't giving myself a scent of any kind just to be distinctive. Like, I, I just, I, yeah, I just was dragging my body through life to yeah, meet okay. my obligations. So you weren't tending a self-image? I wasn't tending a self-image. I scoffed at the idea at times. Right, right. And so just kind of letting go. Yeah. Walking around in Crocs and now yeah, the Crocs are an argument. <laughs> uh, the Crocs are definitely an argument. Um, <laughs> but I should have known there were times when you know we'd be ready, good and ready to go out for dinner, and I'd be at my desk working, and she'd ask me, "It's like, are you ready to go?" And I'm like, "Yeah," because I, to me, I just like I need to put on socks and shoes, right, and leave. But she was looking for me to go like. Yeah, give me five minutes, okay, you know, Change what shirt, shirt am I going to wear, right, right, right. look in the mirror, you yeah. know, I guess the self-image thing, right? Yeah, care about who I am, but I, I didn't I didn't care who, what anyone else thought, because the only person that mattered loved me. Right. But she started to be embarrassed to be seen out in public with me, because I'd wear baggy, right. terrible clothes. Right, 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 right. So... So, so now that uh, you, you know you've uh, sort of done some reading, you're looking at uh, maybe making some changes, overcoming some of the um, some of the stuff uh, that has come onto you from your from your childhood and whatnot. You're hoping that perhaps these changes and awareness will lead you to a new relationship with the person that you had this former former relationship with is that the idea I, I hope so yeah. um, 
I also totally understand if she never wants to get in a relationship with me again. Mm. I burned her too many times. Mm. Um, but I, at the, at the start of this, the day she finally said she was done, I thought I was going to stay in Kelowna and, you know, work from home when she was at work, then stay at my friend's place overnight and mm. give space for like a week. And then a day in, I, I called my mom, I talked to her, and knew that wasn't gonna, that's a band-aid solution. Right, right, that, right. And she, was, and she wasn't gonna go for that again. Right. So I, at the start of it, went like, I'm gonna take the month. I'm gonna see if I can do this in a month and get better. And then three days in, I'm like, this is gonna take longer than a month. This is going to take the rest of my life. Right. And mm. practice will make it easier, but it will never be a thing where I can have... I can hear someone, you know, say how nice something they have is, go in my mind, you know, they're better than you and not have to take the minute it takes to go like, it doesn't matter doesn't matter what someone else has right you have like i yeah i hope through practice and through um basically through practice to just try to change my behaviors because i i also think of the mind somewhat as a like a grassy field okay in the sense that you know when you have animals going through a field, they start, some of them take a specific path that gets worn down more, that gets worn down more, and then all of a sudden you have a trail. Right. And, you know, you, every animal is going to go through that trail until a tree falls on it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so I, like, that's, and this is my tree. Right. This is me going now, like, I can't, and I don't want to go on this warren path. Right. This you wanna, you wanna path won't. Blaze the only, a new trail. The only way to, to do it, and but blaze, blaze, blazing a trail isn't walking through tall grass once. Right. It's going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's kind of. <sighs> the realization I'm trying to make now, and also to just stop seeing self-helpy stuff as self-absorbed or a waste of time mm. it's not it's what yeah if it helps it helps yeah right yeah <laughs> so. cool and and you know i and i like the you know when you uh, sort of indicated that uh you know there's every potential that this is sort of like a waypoint in well, it is a waypoint in, in that bigger journey. I mean, mm -hmm. you're in your 20s, right? Yeah, 20s. So, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you've got a long, you know, journey yeah. ahead of you just in terms of what well, the expectations exactly are for life. But Well, and that's exactly it. My expectation now... So, I, I do... I, I have separated out my expectations from my hopes. Mm-hmm. My hope is that I can save this relationship, like I did propose to this woman. Mm. I do love her deeply, and we get along well on a lot of levels. And again, I wouldn't... If she was the type of person that would have stayed with me doing what I was doing, I wouldn't love her as much. Right. Like, that's... It's difficult for her to communicate sometimes. Like, it's... That's, you know, that's her pattern from childhood mm -hmm. is silence okay and i was e even someone who talks as much as i do i don't think could have gone through to me without with words yeah so it's yeah it's a it's a again i'm i'm grateful i'm grateful that i'm hopefully on the path to getting better it's been cool. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, I, I thank you for the time so and, and come out. How, so so how do you feel? Like, how do you feel having had the conversation? I mean, 
you know, I, I don't suppose it's every day that somebody you don't really know, mm -hmm. uh, you have these kind of conversations. So how does, how does it make you feel? Um, uh, I think specifically it's helpful for me because it's as much as your friends and family want to be there for you as friends and family when you're going through a hard mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, at least with me, I'm a fix-it, fix-it, fix-it person. Okay. So it's nice to have someone who's not going, yeah, but you're not a bad person, or everyone right. does that. And right, it's like, right. yeah, everyone does that, but you know, yeah. everyone but, forgets to signal occasionally. I always want to signal. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I've, it's been a very fun, and it's my first time being on a podcast. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's not a podcast so much as it is, it will be up on YouTube. Yeah, I watched um, a couple of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. Good, good. I because I I hope that you get a chance to see mm -hmm. the links and. Uh... Shadu be boo boo boo. It's been chats over coffee. Oh yeah.